Hyperdimension Neptunia should be a phrase that the PlayStation Vita community is very familiar with. The Vita got two Hyperdimension Neptunia games last year, and there are three on the way this year. After we played and reviewed Rebirth 1 last year, we got more interested in the franchise in general. With the new game just around the corner, I present to you our official review of the game that was originally a PS3 game and the very first Neptunia game compatible with the PlayStation TV, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 2 Sisters Generation. The story of Rebirth 2 takes place in the world of game industry, where the four CPU goddesses govern their countries to maintain balance in the world. As the opening cinematic shows us, the four CPUs are taken down by an unknown force and turned into hostages in the game industry graveyard. Three years later, IF and Kampa, two humans from Planet Tune, go to rescue them, only to narrowly escape an ambush with Nepgear, the CPU candidate for Planet Tune. Despite being the second game in the series, Rebirth 2 is not a direct sequel to Rebirth 1. This game takes place in an alternate reality where the events of the first game did not take place. Despite this, it is still recommended that you play the first game before tackling this one, as it doesn't go out of its way to explain how the world works. While you can jump into this as a standalone story, you won't understand a lot of how game industry works unless you play Rebirth 1. Much like its predecessor, Rebirth 2 is a cross between an action RPG and a turn-based RPG offering a console-style RPG experience as you explore a world map, go through each country, do quests, find equipment, and explore dungeons to fight monsters and boss fights. Everyone who played Rebirth 1 are going to be very familiar with how most of Rebirth 2 works. Almost the entire gameplay system is the same between the two games, with a few additions here and there. The most major addition to the game is called Stella's Dungeon, this is a minigame you can access from any of the country's capital cities and allows you to take a young warrior named Stella, who is modeled after the developer, Fella Stella, who worked on the game, and send her through various dungeons that you unlock as you play through the game. This is more of an emulated minigame, kind of like the Chocobo minigame from Final Fantasy VIII. You can send her in for a certain amount of time and she'll bring you items as well as equipment she can equip to go into another dungeon. The remake system mostly is unchanged from Rebirth 1. There are a few plans that are exclusive to Rebirth 2 that are very useful. The combat is a little bit enhanced as well. While Rebirth 1 allowed you to have three member parties, Rebirth 2 allows you to go in with four members on your party instead of just three. Combat itself is pretty much the same. The Lily Ranks return where you can couple people together to give them various enhancements. And all of the skills and everything are mostly the same, but there are new skills because of the characters. Overall, the combat is new, mostly because of the different characters that were not in Rebirth 1. One of the biggest things of note is the amount of content that Rebirth 2 has as opposed to Rebirth 1. When you played through Rebirth 1, you could access a few different endings. In Rebirth 2, however, there are more than 20 different playable characters that you can recruit into your party, and there are 9 different endings for you to achieve. While this does sound intimidating, it is doable. Getting to the normal ending of the game should take you about 20 to 25 hours. If you want to get the canon true ending, you should add about 5 or 10 hours onto that for the various requirements. Going for all 9 endings will likely take you about 50 to 55, 60 hours to complete. All in all, Rebirth 2 is a game that has a lot of content for you to do even after you finish up the game. As far as the visuals are concerned, Rebirth 2 looks just as exceptional for a Vita game as Rebirth 1 did. They share the same graphical engine which makes the game look like a low-end PS3 title. One thing to note about the engine is that it recycles some dungeons. Many of the dungeons in Rebirth 2 were taken straight from Rebirth 1, and some of the dungeons are recycled even throughout the game. One last thing to note is the amount of lag in the game. In Rebirth 1, there were many sections in dungeons and in battle and animations 
where the game would lag and the frames would slow down. This is still in Rebirth 2, but not as often. All of the dungeon lag has pretty much been dealt with, and the lag is only in the battle animations. You will see occasional lag when the CPUs transform or when certain battle animations go through, but all in all, the lag situation is a lot better than it was in its predecessor. The second game in the Hyper Dimension Neptunia franchise makes the jump from the PlayStation 3 to the PS Vita and PlayStation TV with some new improvements, characters, as well as endings. On the downside, there are some frame drops in some areas and some of the dungeons are recycled throughout. Despite this, the game comes packed with enough fun comedy in its story and new content to keep any RPG's fan attention for 50 hours and beyond. The PlayStation Vita Reviews rates Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 2 Sisters Generation an 8 out of 10.